Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Okay. Uh, this is a summary of some of the things that I feel are, are important for you to know about the many forms of behaviorism. Right? So itong topic natin, this spans um, around five decades, no? from uh, around 1910s to 1960s. No? Um, and actually, if you think about it, Ilang, ilang dekada pa lang yung nakakalipas since the establishment of uh, Wundt's first laboratory in Leipzig, di ba? 1879. Tapos after a few decades, no, nung dumating na sa Amerika yung psychology, biglang nagkaroon siya ng kakaibang flavor. No? At yung flavor na yan, yan yung pag-uusapan natin uh, dito sa video na to. Okay? So here are some questions that I'd like you to think about. Um, as I proceed with the discussion, so first, what conditions allowed behaviorism to thrive? Okay. Second, how do behaviorists view the world and the people living in it? Third, what can we learn about human nature, if any, from animal experiments? So, siguro hindi naman lingid sa inyong kaalaman na sikat na sikat yung pigeon ni Skinner. Or if you were able to read uh, our chapters, nakita ninyo yung... Uh, Yung, yung dominance ng maraming mga rat experiments. No? So, why is that important kung tao naman yung pinag-aaralan natin? No? And then fourth, and this is going to be a, a, a long-standing reflection, pero ibabato ko na to sa inyo ngayon kasi hint, hint, magiging isang central question ito sa inyong um, final essay or requirement in this class. No? So, I want you to start thinking about whether behavior control is a key to making our lives better. Okay? Sige. Um, here are things that hopefully I will be able to cover in this short video. I will do my best to keep this to 30 minutes. Okay? Sige. So ito yung ilan sa mga learning outcomes um, after reading the text and after watching this video. Yung isa, uh, you should be able to trace the evolution of behaviorism and its ideas. Second, you should be able to explain the basic tenets of behaviorism. So if you're going to put yourself in the shoes of a behaviorist, how are you going to view the world? How are you going to view human nature? Okay. Third, discuss the contributions of animal research and experimentation on the methodology of psychology. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. And then finally, uh, I'd like us to discuss the enduring influence of behaviorism in the development of the ideas in psychology. Okay? Are you ready? Sige. So just in case na miss nyo lang yung ating synchronous session at naghanapin isang quick check-in, I have one for you. Okay. Yeah. So because uh, our chapter talked about neo-behaviorists, I figured why not we get our song lyrics for this video mula kay Neo, okay? So this one was released in 2005 um, uh, from the song So Sick. No? Sabi niya, that's the reason I'm so sick of love songs. So sad of tears, okay? So before you proceed to watching this video, no, I want you to think about this question. What songs do you associate with heartbreak and killing? What happens to your body when you hear these songs? No? Do particular memories come flashing back? Okay. So I want you to think about this question. I want you to answer them. Um, if you feel bored, no, wala kausap, you might want to pause this video now. Okay, I'm giving you permission to pause. And then talk to your talk to somebody, you know, whether to chat or make, make kasama kayo sa, in your current location. Okay. So pause the video, think about it, answer. Okay, and now that we're back, um, what is interesting for me about our visceral reactions to songs is that it gives us an idea ng potential explanation na pwede natin magamit yung paliwanag ng mga behaviorists, okay? Um, you, you know, we, we hearken back, without going into detail, no, but if you're familiar with Pavlovian conditioning, that is basically the idea. Diba? Yung isang kanta, kunwari, akong favorite mo si Adele. No? May, merong isang, may mga nag-aaral nung kanta niyang Someone Like You, no? and why that sort of evokes like sad memories and sad reactions. So, a song like Adele's 
someone like you na pwede namang neutral yung reaction or wala tayong any visual reaction na na, na maramdaman. Pero pag narinig mo siya, it elicits um, a particular a particular experience or a particular emotion. So kay Pavlov, ayun yung idea niya ng um, conditioned response. No, yung pag nakarinig ka ng kanta tapos parang naka, kinilig ka o nalungkot ka o nagalit ka, it's an example of a conditioned response kasi yung song which doesn't really elicit all these complex emotions no? or complex reactions, they could have been paired with an experience, uh, an unconditioned stimulus, ang tawag nga ni Pavlov, na siyang nag elicit ng kilig, ng fear, or whatever. No? So when, when um, an experience, no, uh, when an unconditioned stimulus, like heartbreak or like... Uh, you know, break up with someone, no? uh, or or meron kang isang particular location na paborito na niyo mag-date. No? So yung ganong association dun sa isang kanta, no? when they're paired together, kahit na nawala na yung unconditioned stimulus, no? yung partner mo, o yung lugar ko sa kayo nag-date, no? o yung sakit na dinulot niya, yung harsh words or whatever, no? kahit na yung kanta na lang, because of repeated associations with that unconditioned stimulus, the song can produce the reaction. Okay? So I thought that was, that's a, a kind of a, might be a good way to kick off um, our conversation. Kasi Pavlovian yung paliwanag no, doon sa karanasan natin pag may narinig tayong kanta. Okay? One of the many possible explanations, but still an interesting um, explanation and a plausible explanation nonetheless. Okay? I will proceed. So, bago tayo pumunta doon sa detalye, pag-usapan muna natin yung thoughts ni Skinner about psychology noong 1987. So, if you think about it, 1987 is a fairly recent past. Now, in fact, pinanganak na ako nung nag-publish tong, tong essay na to ni Skinner. And it's, the, the essay is aptly titled, what happened to psychology as the science of behavior? No? So merong look back si Skinner sa naging development ng psychology and um, to sort of get us into the thinking of behaviorists, let's, uh, I'll, I'll read to you the criticism of Skinner no, as he presented in the essay. Sabi niya, for at least 2,500 years, philosophers and psychologists have proceeded on the assumption that because they were themselves behaving organisms, they had privileged access to the causes of their behavior. But has any introspectively observed feeling or state of mind yet uh, been unambiguously identified in either mental or physical terms? Has anyone, has any ability or trait of character been statistically established to the satisfaction of everyone? Do we know how anxiety changes intention? how memories alter decisions, how intelligence changes emotion, and so on. And of course, has anyone ever explained how the mind works on the body or the body on the mind? Okay? So I, I, I want this uh, criticism of psychology thus far, Skinner, um, to sink in. Okay, you can pause if you like, no, so that you could read again or reflect on this. But I, I, I wanted to show you this first no, to get us in the mindset of these behaviorists, no, especially during that time. No. Um, I, I think that this first quote highlights Skinner's apprehension with finding internal causes to action. No. So merong kilos yung tao, pero ang gusto nating paliwanag, panloob. Okay? So here we can see that Skinner, and actually arguably most behaviorists, uh, Skinner was interested in behavior that can be manipulated or changed. No? Itong mga internal states, itong mga feelings, itong mga mental processes, para kay Skinner, hindi yan nababago. No? Mahirap yan pag-aralan. So maybe we shouldn't be interested in explaining people's actions using these things or these concepts. No? Um, interestingly, no, kung maaalala natin where we took off from last week, last, uh, not, not, well, not last week, but last meeting, our last topic, tinanong natin kung na-establish na ba ng psychologists noon yung kanilang identity. 
Um, so, si, si Skinner, nandun pa rin. Nandun pa rin siya doon sa tradisyon na yun. That we're still trying to kind of prove ourselves. Especially because relatively baby pa yung site. No? Um, si Skinner cautioned that biological explanations devalue the legitimacy of psychology as a discipline. No? Sabi nga niya, uh, this is a direct quote from Skinner, once you tell the world that another science will explain what your key terms really mean, you must forgive the world if it decides that the other science is doing important work. Again, let me repeat that. Because I think this is a very scathing um, criticism of, of Skinner, not the current state of affairs. Sabi niya, once you tell the world that another science will explain what your key terms really mean, so uh, pertaining to like mental processes and then using like the brain, no, the pineal gland or whatever uh, internal biological process or part, you must forgive the world if it decides that the other science you know, is doing the important work. And these other sciences may be chemistry, physics, biology, physiology. You know? Okay. So ang punto niya, kung gagamit tayo ng concepts na hindi naman within our domain, uh, mawa-water down yung value ng, ng psychology. So ang, ang, ang point dito ni Skinner is that not necessarily to do away with it because they're not important. But what he's saying is maybe something observable is the domain of psychology. And let's focus on that. So let's leave the other things um, to the other sciences. Pero tayo ang focus natin, kilos. Okay? Let's, let's uh, I'll, I'll read another quote from, from this essay. So mayroon siyang challenge. No? Sabi niya, sa ng dulo ng essay, what must be changed if people are to behave in noble rather than cruel ways? to accept the words of others, but never without questioning it, to do things that uh, consequences too remote to serve as reinforcers and to refrain from attacking those who oppose them. So basically, yung sinasabi dito ni, ni Skinner ay, what is the utility of psychology? What is the utility of our field? Parang ang dami nating inaaral, pero bakit parang wala naman nagbabago? No? Kung, kung, kung papasok tayo dun sa, dun sa approach no, ni Skinner, kay Skinner napakahalaga ng consequences. Okay? Um, and if, if, if we reflect about what Skinner is saying here, parang, parang no, meron tayong personal experience na mas madali maging masama. It's, it's, it's so much easier to be bad than good. Kasi, like, halimbawa, um, no U-turn or no jaywalking, pero nag-jaywalk ka. Diba? Tapos hindi ka nahuli. So hindi ka nahirapan, hindi ka napagod, nakarating ka sa pupuntahan mo ng mas mabilis. As opposed dun sa isang tao na gumamit pa ng overpass, naglakad ng malay, naghanap ng tamang tawiran, napagod siya, no? uh, nahirapan siya, uh, so na- napunish pa siya for doing the right thing. No? Okay. So, so what, 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 what I'm trying to say here is, um, if we want to change the world, if you want people if you want people to be better what do we need to look into okay kasi kung behaviorist ka tulad ni Skinner baka yung emphasis mo dapat on consequences okay so which is something external and therefore no para kay Skinner yung solution to a lot of our problems be it climate change be it poverty no um sabi niya psychology should confine itself to its accessible subject matter and leave the rest of the story of human behavior to physiology. Okay? So para kay Skinner, yung issues ng psychology pagdating sa ambiguity ng domain, ano ba dapat yung arali natin? Kung pag-uusapan dito yung ano ba yung utility ng field? No? Bakit ba hindi tayo magkasundo sa mga concepts natin? No? And, and more importantly, why aren't why why aren't we contributing to the betterment of, of, of human experience? Okay. Ang, ang point niya, well, maybe the solution is to delineate psychology with the other sciences in terms of the domain of study and goals. Okay. So at this point, siguro mararamdaman na natin or na mapapansin na natin, parang may shift na, nag-iba na yung ihip ng hangin kumpara dun sa mga previous discussions or previous topics natin. 
Okay? So at least in, in the United States, the focus was suddenly on behaviorism. Okay? So behaviorism was starting to gain prominence. Okay? So ang tanong ngayon, why is this period of mainstream and modern psychology important? I talk about mainstream because, well, as, as the author, uh, as Goodwin would say in the chapter, and actually in even sila Pickern and Rutherford, sabi naman nila na, um, pag dinidiscuss yung kasaysayan ng behaviorism, at yung development nito, at yung influence nito, uh, we're really talking about American psychology. Kasi kasabayan ng behaviorism in other parts of the world na merong ibang mga schools of thought na nagde-develop like just thought psychology, like psychoanalysis, etc. No? But before we proceed, I want to make the case. No? Bakit ba mahalaga na pag-usapan natin yung, yung bahaging ito ng kasaysayan? I think, no, based on my, my, my interpretation and reading, knowing about the development of behaviorism tells us the history of the methods that we use in our in our discipline. So bakit experimentation is queen? No? A lot of it has to do with the enduring legacy of behaviorism. Okay, so dito malalaman natin, bakit nga ba napaka-crucial? No? Ano yung turning point? Bakit naging emphasis yung, um, yung, yung experiments? Pangalawa, uh, knowing about the development of behaviorism also tells us the history of our epistemology, spinning the way that we pursue knowledge. No? So meron tayong idea ng ito yung tamang paraan para maunawaan ko yung mundo at yung mga tao. No? Um, and you'll probably encounter this in your other subjects, maybe in your sec 220, no? the idea of logical positivism. Uh, have you heard? Have you heard about, about logical positivism? Yeah, okay. So yung positivism, ito yung idea na mas empirical yung stance. No? Uh, ng, ng, y- yung the way that we get to know things ay kailangan may, may experience natin siya through our senses. So yun naman yung idea behind empiricism. But also um, that for us to be able to understand the loss of nature and, as, and you know, as an extension, yung loss of human nature, possible lang yun through the public observation of measurable events. Okay? So sa usapin ng psychology, uh, in, at, at nararamdaman pa rin natin ito hanggang sa kasalukuyan na napakataas ng premium na binibigay sa, sa, sa measurement. No? Sa making something unobservable, observable by giving it a particular quantity. So just like some quantifying. Itong epistemology na yan ay hanggang ngayon pervasive. So para maintindihan natin bakit ang tagal na, no? 1913, yung sinasabi nilang hujat na no, nagsimula na yung behaviorism, uh, hanggang sa kasalukuyan na naramdaman pa rin natin yung, yung, yung effects, no, no, yung pressure sa atin. Okay? But also, finally, I think this chapter, these two chapters, no, are very, very important, or this period is very important, kasi may kita natin dito yung isa sa early start talaga at naging napaka-influential yung idea of being able to control or shape behavior. Or, or, or isa sa naging trabaho ng mga psychologists ay pag-identify what are these factors or forces that control our actions. Okay? So I think um, it's kind of uh, very important that we, that we discuss this, no? that we discuss this chapter. Okay. Uh, relatedly, no? kung familiar naman tayo sa naging kasaysayan ng, ng mainstream or Western psychology, Meron yung the unidirectional flow of knowledge. Diba? So from the powerful uh, areas, no, parts of the world, in global north, yung nabuo nilang knowledge system, kadalasan napapasa nila dun sa mga less powerful and less influential like us in the global south. No? So because of that unidirectional flow of knowledge, what became popular in the U.S. became transported no, to many parts of the world. Um, kaya mahalaga na maintindihan natin ah, posible na dito tayo nagsimula no? at kung ito yung importante para sa mga Amerikano nung panahon na yun no? bakit hanggang ngayon um, ito pa rin no? yung importante para sa maraming mga psychologists even here in the Philippines okay sige 
So dito sa next few slides, uh, in our next discussion, um, I will be asking eight questions. Okay? So yung pwede ninyong gawin, pag natanong ko yung question, you can pause and you can sort of like formulate your own answer and let's see whether your answer sort of matches mine. Okay? I'm not saying that I'm correct, but I'm just saying uh, para mas maging interactive tayo, throw the question and then you sort of um, let's imagine that we were in class and you were sharing your answers to, to me or to your group mates. Okay? Sige. So let's start with question number one. Okay, Up to this point, meaning itong, uh, early 20th century, 1910, no? what do we know so far about psychology? Okay, So this is just a very quick review. Napag-usapan natin nung, nung previous topic, isa sa mga trabaho ng mga psychologists on was boundary work. How can they differentiate themselves from the other natural scientists? Okay? Um, up, up to this point, no, there, there was very hem heavy emphasis on psychology as a study of consciousness. No? So what was the implication of that? Uh, crucial sa mga psychologists noon yung analysis of complex mental processes into their constituent elements. No? So yung, nababanggit natin to pa ulit-ulit, eh, yung feature ng, ng disiplina natin na very reductionist, no? uh, very structuralist in that sense. So that the elements of mental processes are isolable, na pwede mo silang paghiwahiwalayin. No? And also that you can put them together to form something more complex. No? So, for instance, di ba, uh, yung psychophysics, yung madalas na pinag-aaralan, yung idea ng vision, yung properties ng vision, so binibreak down nila yan into its constituent elements. No? So yung vision may include quality, may include duration, may include intensity, may include clarity, no? Um, but then later on, as, as uh, we will discover, no, nabanggit ni Watson na, well, yeah, but the problem there is if you ask different people about these constituent elements, iba-iba yung sinasabi, tas pahaba ng pahaba yung list. So where do we draw the line? Okay? Um, nung panahon din na to, uh, alam din natin na sumikat din yung mga tinatawag natin ng mga functionalists. So sa kanila, yung tingin nila sa action and also, more importantly, mental processes ay hereditary adjustments to the environment. Okay? So that's why they, they, they remain. That's why we have these specific functions or specific mental processes is because it allowed us to survive in our, in our, in, in our environments. Okay? So ano yung mga sexy topics na pinag-aaralan up to this point? So yung mga keywords palagi ay sensation, perception, attention, emotion, volition, or desire. Okay? Kaso, what's wrong with this state of psychology as a science? No? Particularly as a natural science as expressed by John Watson. So si John Watson, yung isa sa kinikilalang ama ng, ng behaviorism in the United States. Okay. So nabanggit ko na kanina, yung isang issue niya, uh, yung trabaho ng mga early psychologists noon ay nag-i-infer. Di mo kasi ma-observe, di ba? So you're inferring internal states, pero nakabase yung inference sa introspection ng trained observers. Okay? So kung naalala ninyo, di ba, merong system introspection, um, yeah, nila William James, um, pero, pero kailangan trained sila, okay, Tapos sila yung pinagkukuhanan ng datos. Sila yung pinagkukuhanan natin ng mga laws of human nature. Okay. So medyo nag-aalangan si, si Watson dun sa ganong uh, inference na ginagawa natin sa mga bagay na hindi natin nakikita. Taking off also from, from last topic's um, ideas, there was dissatisfaction with the utility of psychological experiments at that time. So basically hindi nakikita ng mga tao ano yung gamit niya sa mga buhay nila. Okay? Pero yung pinaka-criticism ni Watson ay, wait, hindi ba ina-assert natin na natural science tayo? So kung natural science tayo, bakit yung mga methods natin no, sa research, kakaiba sila sa ginagawa sa physics, sa bio, sa chemistry? Okay? So, kaya, so parang bahagi pa rin ito ng, ng boundary work no? uh, uh, na, na, na trabaho ng maraming psikologiya. So, Kung sabi natin natural science tayo, dapat yung ginagawa natin ay pang natural science din. Okay. 
So, eto na nga. Noong 1913, nagkaroon ng lecture si John Watson sa Columbia University. So, yung lecture niya, uh, ang title niya doon ay Psychology as the Behavior Views It, which eventually was published no, into, into, into an article. Okay? So, dito, delay down niya yung groundwork. No? So, sinabi niya, there should be a shift in psychology. Um, ito, interesting kasi if you, if you have, actually if you have the time, I, I highly encourage you, no, nabanggit ko na sa ating study guide na, it's, it's a r- relatively easy and quick read. No? And, if you, and if you read it, yung first two sentences ng essay niya, ito agad, yung pasok niya. Sabi niya, psychology as the behavior, behaviorist views it, is a purely objective, property one, experimental, property two, branch of natural science, property three. So, sobrang packed. Tapos, sinabi rin niya, its theoretical goal, excuse me, is the prediction and control of behavior. So, dun sa lecture niya na yun, nilatag na niya, eto dapat yung ginagawa ng psychology. We predict and we control behavior through objective and experimental means. So ngayon, nag-iba na yung definition ng psych, nag-iba na yung domains. So kung dati, study of consciousness or mental processes, naging, ang suggestion nila, which, which of course um, uh, was widely accepted, ay the study na siya, uh, the prediction control of behavior. Okay. So the focus now would be on observables. And cataloging, interestingly, behavior of animals, including humans. So a lot of what the early behaviorists knew about behavior ay nanggaling sa experiments nila on, on animals. Actually, well, on animals, on, on, on very simple organisms like an amoeba. No? And we'll get to that later kung bakit um, naging influential yan, crucial sa development ng behaviorism. Okay, so biglang nag-iba yung sexy topics. No? Yung, yung mga topics na parang madalas pag-usapan, ito na yung SR, yung stimulus response. All of a sudden, we talk about habits, habit formation, nasa parlansa natin yung reinforcement, no? drive reduction. There was also emphasis on the study of language. Okay? So, at this point, gusto ko lang i-flag na, kung mapapansin niyo yung pinag-aaralan ng mga behaviorists, ay hindi naman lagit-laging external. Lagit-laging kung ano lang yung nakikita mo. Although, of course, they have to be highly tied to what can be observed. Okay, we will get to that a little bit later. But what, what, what I want to point out here is that pagamat napaka-stricto ni Watson sa usapin ng observable, sa usapin ng behavior, from 1913 to around 1960s, no, dun sa span of time na yan, nagkaroon actually ng iba't ibang uri ng behaviorism. Um, and we'll get to that shortly. Okay. So question number four. We're halfway there. Are you okay? Sige. So dahil kasaysayan ito, and we usually talk about founding parents, the founding fathers, ang tanong natin, was Watson the first one to declare a war on consciousness? What do you think? Yes or no? Sige nga, I want to hear. <laughs> okay. So, um, the answer is certainly not. Certainly not. Um, like most founding fathers in our field, may mga katangian si Watson that allowed him no, na sa kanya ma-associate yung school of thought. No? So, si Watson had a clear vision. Kinommunicate niya yan. So, parang siya naging mouthpiece ng maraming mga psychologists na may beef on study of consciousness. No? Kinuminicate na sa lecture, but also na-recognize niya, mahalaga na i-publish siya. No? Um, crucial din, kung naalala niyo, ito yung common thread no, ng karamihan ng mga founding parents natin, they attracted young following. So marami silang mga estudyante that sort of spread the word. And speaking of spreading the word, he was considered as a staunch proselytizer. Kung bagay parang, isang tao na sobrang active na mag-convert ng mga tao. So, kumbaga eh, uh, ang salita ni Watson, yan. At uh, yun yung, yun yung uh, sinusubukan nila na, na palaganapin sa, sa maraming mga tao. So, uh, apparently, he wrote for a lot of popular media. Um, and he, you know, he, he does a lot of, um, 
uh, more popular routes no? so for people to get to know his ideas no? and, and the general tenets of behaviorism. Okay, so relatedly, question number five, what conditions allowed behaviorism to thrive in the U.S.? Okay, so by thrive, we mean hindi naman to parang immediate na 1913, after that, boom, superstar na agad si, si, si Watson at pang everybody wanted to do behaviorism. No? Nabanggit yan din ni Goodwin no, na um, while there was prominence of, of behaviorism for, um, you know, 50 years, other people were still doing their own thing. No? Hindi naman lahat behaviorist bigla. No? And later on, I'll, I'll show you a chart, no? Um, sort of mapping the, the rise and, and fall of the prominence of behaviorism through the years. Um, binabanggit din dito na prior to 1913, there's like a good like 40 years maybe no? na nag-lay yung groundwork, na-lay down yung groundwork. Tapos parang culmination yung 1913's uh, talk ni, or lecture ni Watson. No? Um, by thriving here, sabi la, it also took like almost a decade Um, for it to catch on. But still, it caught on. No? It became such a powerful force in, in, in American psychology and maybe a modern psychology in general. No? In fact, isang dahilan kaya it, you know, preparing for, for this integration video took a really long time than, than, than what I expected. No? Um, kasi, una, it, it's relatively recent, but imagine yung si Skinner nagsusulat pa siya noong 1987. Um, Because of its sheer force, you know, so many things have been written about it. And you know, if you wanted to take a deep dive, medyo marami ka talagang babasahin, including the the the, the early work, you no, know, or or the actual works of Sina Skinner, Sina Watson. Um, in any case, what conditions allowed behaviorism to thrive in the U.S.? Okay, so ito yung ilan sa mga um, paliwanag nila was niya. No, may kinalam sa zeitgeist of that time. Okay. Yung isa, nabagit ko na, di ba? Merong, yan, from the uh, late 19th century, nag-lay down na yung groundwork for an objective experimental psychology. So in fact, some of the early purely objective studies uh, of animal behavior were conducted by Darwin and company. No? At yung ginagawa nila ay they wanted to find out alin yung instinctive and therefore alin yung hereditary, alin yung, you know, maybe you're born with it no? versus what was learned. Kung baga, ano yung nagiging, uh, ano yung develop ng mga kilos ng mga hayop uh, in relation to their interaction with the environment. No? So nag-exist na yun. And in fact, um, interesting kasi may mga experiments talaga na ginawa si na Darwin. As in like, parang tinatakpan nila yung mata ng mga birds, no? Um, It, it just para makita nila how they will react no, to particular stimuli. So they were actually doing experimental work. No? Also around 1890s, at nabanggit din natin to, I think, uh, a few meetings ago, na there was a high use of apparatus for the measurement of behavior. No? And registration of behavioral data was commonplace. So being, uh, and dami ng mga tools at, at the disposal of, of, of a lot of researchers. No? who wanted not just to study mental processes, but behaviors as well. Um, in fact, some of these tools were even employed on children. Um, so medyo may ganong versatility yung mga equipment. Kasi hindi siya kailangan necessarily sa lab. In fact, yung ilan sa early experiments, for instance, on handedness, na paano nade-develop yung if you're left-handed or right-handed, um, sa bahay lang ginawa no, nung isang uh, researcher at sa anak niya ginawa. Um, so what is the point? So in short, experimental methods that were objective, quantitative, reproducible, flexible, natural, and convenient were already in place. Okay, so Watson didn't do um, a lot of convincing. People knew that these methods existed and that they actually work. What else? Um, nabanggit na kanina na, you know, there was kind of a disarray among introspective psychologists. Uh, there was wise, widespread disagreement on two fronts. Eh, ito yung crucial, di ba? When you're establishing a discipline early on, kailangan solid yung both content and method. Ano yung aaralin? Paano mo siya aaralin? 
So, nagkakaroon na nun ng, ng disagreements. And what does consciousness even mean? Kahit si William James, di ba? Um, na, mayroon siyang mga essay na sinulat about does consciousness even exist? No? Um, nagkaroon din ng problema with introspection vis-a-vis experimentation. So, there was just... Um, parang people needed someone and that someone was Watson to just say or to have them solve you know, this particular dilemma. And how did Watson solve it? Sabi nga ni Wozniak, kaya crucial yung role ni Watson sa kasaysayan ng behaviorism, the solution was, hindi natin naiintindihan, hindi natin alam kung ano gagawin natin, then let's throw it out of the window. So by throwing out consciousness, he rid psychology of introspection. And what remained was an objective psychology of behavior no? uh, and described as a revolution and claimed for his own. So, siya na yung nagtakta. No? Huwag, na natin, huwag natin aralin yan. Ang aralin natin yung behaviorism. I have to reiterate this. No? Kasi a lot of behaviorists and a lot of scholars would often say, um, yung ganitong presentation sa history sometimes leaves the impression na hindi importante para sa behaviorists, yung internal states. Actually, that's not the point. The point was, importante siguro, pero hindi natin maaral, so let's shift our focus. Let, let's study things that we can explain and understand. Kesa yung mga bagay that just give us more confusion. Okay? So what else uh, allowed behaviorism to thrive in the US? So what was it in the site, guys, in the United States? during the Roaring Twenties, sabi nga nila. So, kung napansin nyo yung structure ni Goodwin, nagsimula siya sa applied psychology and then tsaka niya din discuss yung behaviorism. So, apparently, nililay down din ni Goodwin yung what was going on in America during that time. No? Na, yung pagkakaroon ng boom in applied psychology also signaled that a lot of psychologists were withdrawing from the early tradition of introspective psychology. So, meron kang attack from the methodological front, no? yung mga experimentalists, and sabi nila, mali yung introspection. Um, but also, because of the need for the science to be useful, marami rin yung mga tao na nagtrabaho sa industry, no? yung applied work in advertising, testing work, education, that signaled, ah, okay, so people were sort of um, moving away from consciousness and introspection. And that sort of made it somewhat easier for, beha- for behaviorism to rise in prominence. No? Um, and, and finally, there was a push for the discipline to be interested in human life. Na hindi siya divorced from people's needs and problems during that time. No? And that there was a need for order. That was the, the general theme no? of that applied psychology chapter, that people wanted a sense of order and therefore we needed to understand ways to control or shape people's behaviors. So speaking of behavior, what is behavior anyway? Okay. Maybe at this point, I'd like to invite you to take a quick break, a five-minute break. But then you're going 10. You can make it longer if you like, but just please promise me that you'll come back. Okay. So you can pause the video for now and stretch hydrate, stand a bit, look away from the screen, and then I'll see you after about five minutes or so. All right. See you again. Okay, are you back? Sige. Balikan natin yung question, yung ating hanging question. What is behavior anyway? We've had this deep dive um, into the development of behaviorism. Uh, at this point, we tried to figure out ano yung mga ideas that transplanted earlier ideas, no? um, at ano yung context na ginagalawan nila Watson and company. But maybe before we proceed and eventually, you know, wrap this up, now we're down to our last three questions, it might be good to clarify what a behavior is anyway, no? para malaman natin. So, asan ba talaga sila naging interesado uh, itong mga behaviorists na to? And I don't know if you if you recognize the the kid in the picture. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, if, if you recognize the kid in the picture, take one lang to absentia. Okay. Ayan si Little Albert, yung, yung famous, isa sa mga fi, infamous experiments ni, ni Watson kung saan nag, 
uh, apparently, tinuruan niya yung si Little Albert, yung isang infant na matakot no, sa isang um, isang isang toy, isang furry toy that eventually generalized to other furry objects and animals. I think even Santa Claus. I'm not sure if that's actually an urban legend, but that was the that was the one of the um, sinasabi nila na, na kung saan generalize yung fear in the little Albert. Okay. So, ayon sa APA dictionary, yung behavior ay activity of an organism. So take note the use of the word organism because that includes Uh, animals, non-human animals, no, single-celled organisms, kasama rin yun. So, a behavior is an activity. Tingnan niyo how it is defined. It's an activity in response to external or internal stimuli, including objectively observable activities, introspectively observable activities, and non-conscious processes. Okay, we'll get to that a little bit later. We'll, I'll show you um, a diagram that will give us a sense of what behaviorism we're talking about. But the way that, that EPA defines behavior is actually not very different from how behaviorists from different persuasions conceptualized it back then. You know? Of course, you have your radical behaviorists who said, talagang anti-mental processes. No? May, may Skinner, no? na representative for that. But if you, if you think about the beginning of behaviorism, hanggang pumunta ka sa neo-behaviorists, Um, and then eventually hang nagseg na tayo dun sa more cognitive behavioral you know, kind of um, framing of human nature. Yung behavior talaga ay uh, influenced or determined by not just the environment, okay, but many things that are also internal. Okay? But having said that, early on, the primary determinant of behavior was genes, were, were genes and environment. So yung nature-nurture debate, di ba? Pero dahil nga mahirap aralin yung nature aspect, mas nag-focus yung early behaviorists sa environment. Okay? Yung gusto ko rin i-flag dito yung idea ng activity siya na in response to something. So a behavior is usually determined by something or it's dependent on something. It happens because... Um, there was uh, a, a stimuli that kind of led that uh, organism to respond. Okay? Sige. Yung isa rin sa mga favorite definitions ko ng behavior. Um, at ito si Wozniak. Uh, kaya gusto ko rin siya kasi binagbalik na naw siya doon sa conceptualization ng mga early behaviorists. At sabi niya na isang common kahit iba-iba sila ng persuasions, isang common yung conceptualization ng behavior na pattern of adjustment. Okay? So, dahil pattern siya, it can be simple. It can also be complex. No? But it is an adjustment. No? Meaning, merong... Uh, ba- bakit siya adjustment? Kasi yun nga, eh, nag-respond ka or dependent yung pattern of activity sa stimulus conditions in the environment and also the internal uh, state of the organism. Okay? Itong pattern of adjustment, itong behavior, no, pwede yan innate, sabihin, you know, uh, hereditary, pwede rin yan acquired. No? Uh, pwede siyang down to the level of skeletal, like movement of your arms no, or something visceral, like maybe um, uh, uh, yung, yung Pavlovian salivation, no, pwede rin yun. No? Uh, pwede siya explicit na pattern, no? something more overt. Pwede rin siya implicit, something more covert. No? So w- what am I trying to flag here? Kung may kita natin yung definition ng behavior, it's, it's, a, it's performative, something outward. No? Um, but also that there is idea na may certain goal. That's one. Na parang goal-directed siya. So, hindi ka lang parang puppet necessarily. No? But also that there is a responding to stimuli. So, in, in, in that sense, um, yung, yung behavior, no, yung activity ng tao ay bunga noong environment na kinalulugaran niya. No? Nabanggit ko na na it can be simple, it can be complex, no? 
uh, can be overt, covert, inherited, or learned. Okay. I, I don't know if that clarifies things. I hope so. Um, so, yun yung mga keywords. Activity, pattern of adjustment, performance, no? that is usually dependent on specific determinants, whether external or internal. Okay? So, if you think about it, naging crucial para sa maraming mga behaviorists yung learning. Learning became a central process kasi hindi lang sila naging interesado sa ano ba yung mga different forms of behaviors. No? They were more interested in a relatively permanent change in behavior due to a particular experience. You know, learning, the definition of learning is one of my favorite definitions in psychology. So again, behaviorists were interested in how does a behavior change or how does a behavior adjust or adapt no, to particular situations? No? Yung experience dito actually is broad. If you're familiar, kung nag-take kayo ng introductory psychology, yung idea ng experience dito, naka-divide yan usually sa chapters ng conditioning, so paired associations, no, whether it's uh, the pairing between uh, an unconditioned and a conditioned stimulus, no? There's also the idea of paired association between an action and its consequences. No? So whatever the consequences, yun yung magpapredict kung ano yung kilos mo. Um, pwede rin yung mas modeling, na watching others do it. So yung paired associations ay isang halimbawa ng experience. So nagbago because of particular paired associations. Yung experience can also be a little bit more internal, like reducing particular drives, no? or um, responding to particular internal states, like nauhaw ka kaya umunom ka ng tubig. No? And there's also the idea of personal history or the idea of practice, no? the idea of what are the, what are the particular patterns of behavior na paulit-ulit-ulit mong ginagawa. No? That forms part of the experience. Okay? So for behaviorists, they were interested in change, actually, and how to make that change a little bit more permanent. So kung nakikita ninyo, uh, meron talagang idea of shaping, controlling behavior. Okay. We're down to our last three questions. Are you still there? Sige, question number six. Is there only one form of behaviorism? What do you think? Yes or no? Again, certainly not. Okay, at yan yung gusto ng emphasize sa maraming mga scholars na behaviorists. Um... I will not get into detail because yung chapters ni Goodwin, yung dalawang chapters ni Goodwin, chapters 10 and 11, they, uh, uh, Goodwin talks about in detail ano yung mga experiments, ano yung mga key ideas. So I highly encourage you to take a look and read the, uh, these two chapters. Pero papasadahan ko lang yung evolution nitong behaviorism or yung kanyang many forms. No? So nagsimula pa tayan sa Russia kay Pavlov at yung kanyang conditioned reflexes. Like, ayaw siya ng digestive system ng mga aso, but as it turns out, nagkaroon niya ng implication sa pag-unawa ng um, unconditioned and conditioned responses of people to particular stimulus. And then, you ha- nung pumunta na sa Amerika, you have, of course, John Watson, yung kanyang mga rat in a maze studies at yung kanyang mga child development studies. No? And then, after that, no, nung around 1930s to 1960s, you have your new behaviorist, no, si Guthrie, at yung idea niya ng contiguity, no, the idea that um, may temporality yung sequence ng stimulus sa response, no, na kapag yung isang stimulus sinundan ng isang movement, malamang yung movement na yan mangyayari ulit pag lumabas yung stimulus, yung same stimulus no, that made the organism move. Um, there's Tolman's intervening variables, no, the idea that there are things that we don't see. A lot of them are internal states. Um, but they can be inferred, they can be measured, and then they are also related to both your stimulus and response. You have Hall's hypothetical deductive system. Not so ang, 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 ang neat, ang neat nung conceptualization nila, the idea that we need to form and formalize our loss of human nature. So, ibig sabihin, sa pag-aaral mo, yung claims mo should be based on a set of postulates, no? very mathematical, no? very natural science, and from your postulates, you derive your hypothesis, and then you test your hypothesis, and then from your results, you kind of refine whatever principles that you came up with. Okay? 
And then of course, um, nat- natapos yung chapter ni Goodwin dun sa radical behaviorism ni Skinner. No? At si Skinner talaga yung nag-emphasize ng power ng environment, power ng consequences in increasing or decreasing the chances that a behavior will occur. Okay? So now at this point, I want us to put ourselves in the shoes of these behaviorists. If you were a behaviorist, how do you conceptualize human nature? Okay? So what is like a workable model of behaviorism? Sige. So si Kimball offers uh, several diagrams actually. Ang interesting, itong, itong article to ni Kimball, um, ang cute kasi, Um, sinulat niya ito noong 1994. So sabi niya, what if buhay pa si Watson, tapos nakita niya yung developments ng behaviorism through the years, i-reformulate kaya niya yung kanyang original ideas. No? So sinulat niya, itong, itong article ni Kimball, sinulat niya as if siya si John Watson at inintegrate niya yung mga alam na niya so far. Okay. So early on, early on, interesado yung mga psychologists Yung, yung laws of nature for them are in the form of SR. Meron kang cause, you know, stimulus, meron kang outcome. So yan yung independent variable mo yung cause, dependent variable mo yung outcome. Yung causes mo usually, nabanggit ko na, heredity and environmental conditions. No? Tapos yung outcomes mo, behavioral manifestations. Nung pumasok yung mga neo-behaviorists, nagkaroon ng idea ng intervening variables. Ibig sabihin, k- kaya nag kaya kay Tolman, napunta siya sa idea ng drive reduction. No? Kasi sabi niya, malamang meron sa gitna na nagkakabit dun sa stimulus at outcome mo um, that is more internal. Uh, hindi natin nakikita, but we can make them observable through particular measurements. Okay? Tests, personality, etc. Okay. Tapos si Kimball also presents this kind of integration. Sabi niya, a new formula for behaviorism. Now, I'd like to, to walk you through this. No? Uh, so we look at it from left to right. And what does the model say? Yung una, kung pumunta tayo sa dulo, yung behavioral manifestation, sabi niya, these are usually uh, present momentary states. So yung kinos na ginagawa natin at the moment yan, momentary states yan, na reflected as behavior. Okay. Tapos, kung pumunta tayo sa leftmost, no, yung idea is that yung behavior can be relatively enduring, like your past experiences, your past history, your genetics, no, pati yung development mo no, uh, across the lifespan. They can be relatively enduring or temporary, but they can also be, um, sorry, they can be relatively enduring or they can be relatively temporary. Ito yung nasa pinakababa, yung current situation. Okay. Yung nasa gitna, yung idea ay ito nga yung mga internal states na, na um, you just assume that they're, they're there and that they're working. You know? um, and the way for them to, for, for, for the, the way for behaviors to make sense of them is by uh, assessing. Sabi nga natin, di ba, very logical positivist. Internal state, kaya mo siyang i-quantify. Pag na-assess mo na, then it makes sense in the whole equation. Okay? So yan yung, yan yung unang bahagi. Yung nasa gitna, yung, ta- yung tatlong nasa gitna, yan yung mga kinoconsider na mga intervening variables. You can actually think of them as, ito yung mga experiences. Di ba sabi natin yung learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior due to experience. So these are some of the different experiences no? uh, that kind of link your enduring or temporary causes or forces or determinants doon sa behavioral manifestations mo. Okay? So, merong nasa labas, merong nasa loob, tapos meron pang nasa gitna, you know, that kind of interact with all of these things on your left. No? So, you have your uh, SR realized potential or yung biology times previous experience. Then you have your um, yung psychometric realized potential nga, yung mga internal states. No? And then you have instigations. So, yung mga instigations dito, ito yung, uh, halimbawa, amount of practice, amount of stress, kung bagay yung nangyayari sa yung current situation that will cause a particular manifestation in a particular direction. Okay? So why did I want to show you this? I wanted to show you this because um, actually, behaviorism is not simplistic at all. It's 
it's elegant and simple, but it's not simplistic. No, um, that's one. So it's 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 not always very easy to kind of capture what the essence of behaviorism is. No? Um, kaya we need to kind of integrate what the various schools of thought would say. Uh, pangalawa, I wanted to show this diagram just to let you know. Uh, I wanted to pound this that the determinants of behavior can come from outside and inside the individual. No? And then it's not as simple as SR or stimulus response. Something is going on that might explain why a particular stimulus works. Um, and that might also modify the impact of that particular stimulus. Okay? Sige. Last two questions. So, kagaya na nabanggit natin, la, marami sa mga behaviorists, mga hayop talagang inaral nila. Okay? And bakit? Why is animal research important for behaviorists? So, here are some reasons why. Yung isa, experiments were more ethically conducted than animals and humans. So, so if you're going to read some of the details dun sa chapters ni Goodwin, you'd realize that pag inaaral nila yung mga animals, they actually do some operations. So, halimbawa, yung, yung Pavlovian salivation, hindi naman yun parang, paano ba ito gagawin? Ganyan lang ba? Hindi, parang they cut parts of the mouth so that, you know, you can in install something. No? They're caged. They are, uh, there are particular uh, conditions that you make them go through. No? So, sabi nga ni Watson, so imagine, kung hindi natin gagawin yan, sa uh, kung, sorry kung hindi natin gagawin yan sa mga hayop sa tao natin siya gagawin uh, and that wouldn't necessarily be uh, the perfect way to do it so um, and why is that okay why why do we need to look into bakit pwedeng parallel yung experiences ng mga non-human animals no um sabi uh, well yung paniniwala nila and actually they've kind of showed this naman may mga principles that cut across Yung mga SR associations found in animals, they can also apply to humans given strict experimental conditions. Basta yung same conditions na binigay mo dun sa mga non-human animals, ganun din yung gagawin mo sa humans, you're most likely going to see the same processes at work. Okay? Third, dahil ang complex ga ng behavior, yung insights na magagather mo from like simple behaviors like amoeba, pwede mo siya gamitin building block sa pag-unawa ng kilos ng mga tao. Okay. So, yung mga maliliit na kilos na yun, um, pwede kang mag-insight na, ah, what if this happens next? No? Uh, if you put them together, then it gives you a more holistic picture of behaviors. No? And finally, and I think this is very crucial, bakit importante yung animal research and why was this a trend no, early on? Because now, you can truly dispense with internal processes as explanations for simple behavior. No? Halimbawa, amoeba. The experiment says sa mga amoeba. So, i-anthropomorphize mo ba yung amoeba at sabihin mo na nagpa-process siya? Diba? Hindi. Pero ang masasabi mo, if I do this particular, if I give this particular stimulus or condition, ito yung nagiging response niya after. Okay? So, the explanation is not something internal. It's just what the conditions uh, and stimuli that you... Uh, performed or gave to the non-human animal that uh, led to a particular response. No? So, yun, yun yung idea. No? Hindi mo na kailangan i-assume na nag-isip ba yung pusa, nag-isip ba yung pigeon. Um, we wouldn't know, but that's not important anymore. Kasi meron ka ng paliwanan why people behave in a particular way or why animals behave in a particular way. Okay. Finally, why are experiments crucial to behaviorism? Okay. So may problema ka sa introspection, you needed something solid. At para kay Watson, sabi niya, what kind of science blames an untrained introspector for lack of reproducibility? No? Yun kasi yung problema sa introspection. Eh. Kasi kahit na mag-train ka, standardize yung training mo, posibleng isang introspector, iba yung sasabihin niya about a particular sensation compared to another introspector. So, ang nangyayari daw noon, ang sinisisi, ang magkaiba kasi hindi trained well. Pero ang, ang, ang point ni Watson, 
baka dapat ang sinisisi natin ay yung tools, hindi yung tao no? um, na siyang nagpapaliwanag ng mga bagay-bagay. So you do away with that bias, that high level of error, and do it like the natural sciences would. No? Sa so natural sciences, sabi niya, kung hindi nagtutugma-tugma yung mga results, it's probably because merong pagkakaiba sa tools na ginamit. So you standardize the tools and you'd probably get the same results. Nabanggit ko na ito kanina and I'd just like to reiterate. No? Um, yung experimentation, nag-fit siya no? dun sa idea ng creating laws or principles of nature. Okay? So yung experiments were objective. Hindi mo kailangan necessarily ng observer. It was quantitative very logical positivist, fit na fit na dun sa epistemology na everything can be measured, uh, everything can be observed, everything can be quantified, it can be reproducible, pwede maulit, thus you can form principles or laws. It's very flexible. No, uh, Iba't ibang klase ng behavior pwede mong aralin from simple to complex. It was natural, meaning some of the experiments that they did occurred in real life settings, not just in the laboratory, and then it was convenient. Kasi pwede mo gamitin for animals, for humans, and then for a wide variety of samples. Okay. So because now you have that kind of solid infrastructure, just kind of reproducing the same results over and over and over, people were able to formulate their own laws of human nature. Of course, very um, anthro anthro eh, anthrocentric, is that, is that the right word? Very human-centered. Of course, very white, very American-centered. No? Um, but nonetheless, that kind of built the foundations for thinking that what happens in the U.S. and an individual in the U.S. will probably happen similarly to any part of the world um, because we're talking about laws and principles anyway. Okay? Sige. So to synthesize... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to synthesize... Yeah. Ano ba yung enduring legacy ng behaviorism? Okay? So, uh, mag tayo ng tatlong mga kasabihan no, na kind of uh, they held on to and kind of shaped the way that modern psychology developed from 60s, uh, 1960s onward. Yung isa, may paniniwala na kung naiintindihan mo yung isang bagay, kaya mo siyang i-control. Okay, or if you can control it, you probably understand how it works. So if you want to control behavior, you have to understand behavior as it happens in the context of one's environment. Okay, so again, the idea of controlling, not just predicting, but being able to control and shape behavior. Okay, and that was the mark. The mark of knowing something, fully understanding something, is when you are able to control it. Second, we can only be certain of knowledge resulting from publicly verifiable events. So again, ito pumapasok yung enduring legacy ng behaviorism na logical positivist yung paraan ng science. No? Nung time na to, hindi pa masyadong uso yung qualitative research, social constructionism, no? at least in the US ha, during this period. Sa kanila, um, yung source ng knowledge ay dapat empirical and because it's out there, you can observe it, um, you can quantify. Or if you cannot directly observe it, find a way you know, to create operations that will infer how the internal states happen. Okay. And then finally, uh, siguro ito yung elegant about behaviorism is that simple explanations are favored over unnecessarily complex ones. So no matter how seemingly complicated no, yung behaviorism sa lagay na yun, mas simple na siya compared to the uh, alternatives back then. No? So they, the ba, very American, very pragmatic, they want it simple, they want it useful. No? That's the science that we're going to, um, to develop. And you know, for, for a time, it became prominent. And then yung traces of behaviorism, still something that we still feel no, um, our experience up until this point. Okay? Sige. As we wrap up 
this integration video, let's return to Skinner. Okay? Kagaya ng nabanggit ko, this is going to be a long-standing reflection. So ngayon, pinag-usapan natin yung mga boring, dry stuff. No? Context, zeitgeist, importance of particular methodologies, particular ideas, no? um, principles of human nature and learning. No? But I feel like the enduring legacy of behaviorism is that they gave us some clues possibly on how we can make this world better, on how we can better take care of our children, take care of ourselves, take care of our environment. So balikan natin yung sinabi ni Skinner, what must be changed if people are to behave in noble rather than cruel ways? Okay? So knowing what you know now after watching this video, after reading the chapters, after doing your own reflection, do you think behavioral control contributes to making our lives better? And if yes, how so? If not, then what is the alternative if it's not about changing the environment or changing the world so that you end up with the responses that are good you know, or that are for the betterment of society? Okay? To recap, this is um, what we, I'm sorry, to, to recap, this is what we aimed to accomplish. You know? um, we, we wanted to trace the evolution of behaviorism and its ideas. Hopefully, nakuha natin yan um, from the groundwork pre-1913 up to yung evolution towards um, Skinner's radical behaviorism. Uh, we try to define behaviors and we try to give glimpses of the tenets of behaviorism uh, but more importantly, the idea that yung behavior ay manifestations of particular states and that these states ay merong mga determinants that are internal and external. We try to discuss the contributions of animal research and experimentation of the methodology of psychology. Uh, malaking kinalaman nila for the, the rise of, of behaviorism at malaki rin yung kinalaman nila sa pag-frame sa ano dapat yung itsura ng psychology o yung domains ng psychology. And then finally, uh, I wanted you to reflect on the enduring influence of behaviorism in the development of ideas in psychology, particularly the idea of behavior change. Okay? Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you learned something and this one helped. I'll see you all soon again. Bye.